Hi, my name is Sachi, and today I'm going to be talking about my personal journey, self-learning, machine learning as a high school student. You are being watched. The government has a secret system, a machine that spies on you every hour of every day. I know because I built it. I designed the machine to detect acts of terror, but it sees everything. Violent crimes involving ordinary people, people like you. Crimes the government considered irrelevant. They wouldn't act, so I decided I would. But I needed a partner, someone with the skills to intervene. Hunted by the authorities, we work in secret. You will never find us. But victim or perpetrator, if your number's up, we'll find you. Okay, so you guys might be wondering why I'm showing you this clip. But um, this TV show, which I started watching in the spring of 2018, uh, was the reason why I got interested in machine learning. And so basically, in this show, it's about this software engineer who used to work for the government, and he created this machine that um, predicted terrorist attacks by tapping into the databases of cameras and um, data all over the world. And so one of the byproducts of this machine was a backlog of social security numbers of anyone who's going to be in danger. So he partnered with this CIA agent and they went out to try and save these people. So this was the start of my interest in machine learning. And the reason why I got into machine learning was because I was researching this show and I stumbled across a blog post that said that um, a machine like the one in the show, Person of Interest, could actually be created using machine learning and data analysis. And so when I heard about that, I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, we have technology that can essentially predict the future, which is something I thought was only prevalent in science fiction books. And so when I was um, researching machine learning more and more, um, I saw that it was already um, being in use in technology that I was using today, like Amazon's Alexa or Apple's Siri. And it had so many diverse and numerous applications that could not only enhance um, your life, but also had the potential to create like some revolutionary and life-changing technologies. So after discovering machine learning, I became um, um, really obsessed about it, and I started reading a lot of uh, blog posts about it, reading, watching a lot of YouTube videos, and um, yeah. So before I start, um, a little bit about me. Um, prior to my interest in machine learning, I've been coding in Python for about three years now and in Java for about one year. And I really enjoy um, building and I really enjoy building and making things, whether it's hardware or software, um, like working in my garage or in the metal shop or writing algorithms and now building neural networks. So um, the start of my uh, journey into machine learning was through Kaggle. So, like I said, I was reading a lot of articles about machine learning, and I decided to put some of the stuff I'd learned to use. And Kaggle has a lot of free databases that you can use to um, experiment with data or just test out some algorithms and stuff like that. So that's how I started um, learning machine learning, and I was experimenting with um, a lot of out-of-the-box algorithms, you know, just, um, just testing new things. And so after um, playing around with Kaggle for a little bit, I decided I wanted a more formal introduction into machine learning. So I took this free course on Udacity called um, Intro to Machine Learning, which is basically an applied machine learning course where I learned how to use a lot of out-of-the-box algorithms like AdaBoost or a random tree and applied them to a lot of different um, 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 data sets. And so, um, I worked on a lot of cool and interesting projects. Uh, one of them was a bike share project. Um, another one which I found really fascinating was this Enron Person of Interest project. And um, as some of you might know, um, there was this huge scandal, the Enron scandal, where um, the company Enron was it hiding millions of dollars of debt um, through manipulated financial reports and accounts. And so it was my job to figure out who were the main 
people involved in the Enron scandal. So I was given a database of all the emails sent and received by the people involved in um, the Enron scandal. And I had to choose which algorithms, uh, what parameters to change, and stuff like that. Use machine learning in order to figure out who were the culprits of the um, Enron scandal. So that was not only just um, a lot of fun for me, but also made me realize that machine learning was something I was really interested in, and um, I wanted to continue to pursue that. So, like I said, the previous course I took was on applied machine learning. But I was more interested in um, learning how to build my own neural network. Since the idea of a neural network was still kind of a confusing topic for me, I was still not sure how to approach it. So I took um, Udacity's Deep Learning uh, Nano Degree program, where I learned how to build uh, various different types of neural networks from scratch. And I'm going to be talking about some of the projects uh, I did throughout this course, as well as the different types of neural networks that I learned how to build. Um, so after learning how to build a, a basic neural network, I learned how to build a recurrent neural network. And so a recurrent neural network um, is really useful for um, speech recognition or um, for, yeah, for speech recognition and is used in um, Siri and Alexa and stuff like that. So the project that I built based on recurrent neural networks was called Anna Karenina. And so what it did, what it did was it took in the, the characters from the novel Anna Karenina and um, it was able to generate new text based on the text from the novel. So how I did this was I first built my neural network. And um, so I one hot encoded all of my data. Then in the hidden layer, I was able to assign weights to all the current and previous data. So the thing about recurrent neural networks is that they not only take in the current data, but previous data as well. And they, um, a function of recurrent neural networks is LSTMs, which stands for long short-term memory. And so long short-term memory works exactly like the name is. So the long-term memory takes in the older input, and the short-term memory takes in the more current input, which is more relative to the, which is more um, uh, useful for the machine. So the long-term data uh, carries a smaller weight, and the short-term data carries a larger weight. And so when um, combining those weights together, and then I use the softmax activation function to generate a probability distribution of the character that we're going to be generated. And um, as you can see, maybe from um, the video, uh, that's some of my code. And down below is some of the generated text. So um, the next um, neural network I learned how to build was a convolutional network, or a CNN. And convolutional net neural networks specialize in image analyzation and pattern detection. The project I built was a dog breed classifier. So I built a CNN, and I was given a data set with dogs distributed into their relative dog breeds. And uh, when insert when um, feeding the neural network an image of a human or a dog, it was able to tell what type of dog breed it most closely resembled. And the reason why it was able to tell whether um, a human uh, resembled a dog breed as well is because in a CNN, they have um, in their hidden layer they have this thing called a filter, and a filter basically recognizes. Um, some of the um, small features and patterns of an image. And some of these um, features are actually universal and apply to like pictures of a human as well. So they can um, tell what, what type of dog breed the human is as well, as you can see from over here. And uh, another interesting thing about CNNs is that these filters that are used to identify features in an image um, if you visualize them, you can see exactly what um, type of uh, feature it's visualizing, whether it's like the eyelid of a dog or like the snout of a dog or something like that. So that was also really cool. 
So my favorite topic in the whole course was uh, general adversarial networks, or GANs. And GANs are basically a neural network that is able to generate its own new data when it's trained on a previous data set. So a GAN basically has a generator and discriminator. So how it works is that when it's training, um, the generator generates new images, and the discriminator um, tells whether the image is real or fake, meaning how similar it is to the training data to be considered like one of those images. And so after it trains for a couple of epochs, um, the generator and discriminator get closer to each other and closer to one. And so the project I built um, on a GAN was generating uh, faces, so like a face generator. And so I trained it on a huge data set of celebrity faces. And then when I gave the network random noise, after each epoch, it was slowly able to generate um, new faces. And that was really cool uh, for me to do. And um, it was also a little difficult because um, if you don't have your uh, parameters set like you have to play around with the parameters for a little bit in order to start generating more um, human and realistic faces. So um, I had to experiment a lot with the hyperparameters. So the trickiest uh, concept for me was reinforcement learning. And um, reinforcement learning is basically a type of machine learning that enables an agent to um, learn in an environment where it learns from its previous mistakes, successes, and actions. So for my project, I was able to teach a quadcopter how to fly. And so this was such a cool project, but it was also really difficult. And um, so a quadcopter is basically a type of drone with four wings. And I was able to teach it how to learn certain tasks like hovering or flying. And um, the hard part about this with reinforcement learning is it's very sensitive to um, certain parameters. And I thought, you know, it was um, doing well for about 20 or 30 episodes of training by itself, but then all of a sudden its progress would suddenly shoot down and it would stop learning. Or for 40 or 50 episodes, it wasn't learning anything at all, but then it would suddenly shoot up and have an aha moment and start learning by itself. So, it was really tricky to find that sweet spot where the machine was able to learn by itself. But after uh, working on it for a while, I was finally able to get it. So um, the courses that I was taking were not easy. And um, it was really tricky to um, learn topics like that. So um, I had to put in a lot of time and effort. And I had to also change my environment of where I was learning. So, I, I try to learn in a focused, kind of concentrated environment. And um, one of the books I was reading um, at the time called Deep Work really helped me develop techniques that, um, that helped me like, um, develop that sort of concentration and focus that I needed in order to take those courses. So I would go to the library every day for about three to four hours in the morning to study my courses. And yeah, the techniques in the book were really helpful for me. And um, I was able to retain the information that I learned for longer and kind of get like a deeper understanding of what I was learning. So um, what's next? So after I've taken uh, those courses, I'm really interested in pursuing um, any sort of research open source project or even an internship over the summer. And just continuing with machine learning and um, taking more uh, machine learning courses, as well as more Python courses. And um, if you guys want to reach out to me, um, here's my email, uh, Twitter, Medium, and GitHub. And all of the projects that I displayed before um, have links to my GitHub as well. Thank you.